Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me tonight. We are going to be doing a really fun project. Uh, it is going to be just a very simple landscape. I um, think it's totally beginner project all the way. Um, I've got my husband Mark with me here tonight. Hey everybody. And he is manning the chat for our live show. Um, I think I'm going to change the colors. I I started out thinking I might just do it uh, the way this photograph was, um, but I think I want to do blues for the mountain and some like pink uh, and yellow in the sky and then these dark uh, hills. So kind of more like Smoky Mountain feeling um, for this, but you could totally do the sepia tone or sepia tone, how do you say that? Um, one if you want to. So um, I'll tell you the colors to use for that. Um, but we've got a fairly limited palette. I think we're just going to mix. This will be a good mixing lesson. Um, I've just got burnt sienna, which I may or may not need. I don't know. Uh, this is yellow oxide. This is quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, carbon black. And this is unbleached titanium and titanium white. If you don't have unbleached titanium, you can just mix a little bit of this yellow with the white to get this color. Um, and it just makes a softer, uh, more warm mix when you're doing skies and mixing with white. The unbleached titanium gives you a little bit softer look. So I've only got a couple brushes that we'll need today. I'm not exactly sure if we're even going to need the smaller um, number four round here or the fan brush. Uh, there's a few of these little pine trees here. So I may use the fan brush to kind of just stipple in a little bit with that. Um, but the main two brushes that we'll be using are the large num large flat. This is like a one inch flat and then a half inch or a three eighths inch angle brush. And these are Princeton Summit 6100. And these two are my, I don't know if I'm gonna even need the smaller brush either. Um, these are my Robert Simmons Sapphire. So let's get going here. got a 16 by 12 inch, 12 this way, 16 inch that way canvas. You can use whatever size you want. We're just going to kind of use the general principles of the painting and sort of mess with these uh, mountains. I think I'm going to bring this mountain down. Um, just do my own kind of make-believe um, landscape for this one. Just following the basic simple guidelines. So my horizon line is going to be at the top third here. And I'm going to use my unbleached titanium and a little bit of my yellow oxide. Just get a little bit of a soft yellow color. And I'll start to do that at the very top here. Maybe a little bit more. I don't want it too watery. My paint's pretty watery here. I keep, I use a plastic or a foam palette so it can keep my paints moist for several days in a plastic baggie. So if you put out too much paint, like I do most of the time, you can save it by putting it in a bag and coming back to it. I'm going to grab a little bit of quinacridone magenta and start adding that in. Make a soft peach color. I don't know if you can see that color in the light's kind of hitting it. I'm going to start adding that in here. I don't want to go down too far. I'm going to stop it about right there. So this is wet on wet. This is wet. I'm going to blend the wet other wet paint up into it. If you're having trouble blending like this, you could just do the yellow part, let it dry completely, and then do this pink part or the softer pink part and just lightly dry brush over the top or mix up the two colors and blend a little bit of the other color in it. But it, if you work quickly enough, you should be able to get it on there before it dries. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the quinacridone magenta and do a nice brighter and I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm just laying my paint down first. You notice until most of the paint is out of my brush. And then once it 
is pretty dry, then I'll go back up here and sort of lightly, very lightly blend back and forth. And I'm keeping these blends sort of horizontal. And it's okay if they're not completely blended. It looks maybe like there's some clouds or something up there if they have a little bit of, I'm going to put a little bit of this pink up here in a couple places. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I might add just a tiny, tiny bit of my ultramarine blue and some white. Just do a soft purpley. Now the yellow um, is mostly out, so that's why it's not making a green because of course the yellow and or the yellow and blue would make green, but it's okay. So I'm pretty. I'm already farther down than my third, so I want to stop there and. Uh, trying to see if I need to dry this. Probably ideally I would, but I'm going to go ahead and see if I can do keep going and just make sure that it if it starts giving me trouble I might have Mark dry it for me. He's waiting. He mm -hmm. he's ready for it. Yeah, I'm on standby here. <laughs> but we have a first we have a first question here okay. asking, did you spray your canvas first? I didn't this time, no. Okay. And why didn't you? Um, because this is, uh, because I was blending it, I didn't want too much water interfering. I wanted the paint to stay thick. Um, so that's, that's why. Okay. And because you're doing a wet on wet? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. These heavy body acrylics, they'll stay, they'll stay, um, wet for, you know, pretty good long time. Um, and yeah, since I wasn't doing like a solid, uh, color all over and I wanted this graduated blend. I didn't want it interfering too much. You could also use a glazing medium for that. So if you're having trouble and you want a little bit extra drying time, add a little bit of glazing medium into your colors and that'll help you too. Okay, so I'm going to make a purplish blue here with my quinacridone and my ultramarine. These two colors make really, they're very vibrant and transparent colors, so they make really pretty purples. And then I think I'm going to use the white with this. And yeah, that's pretty good. Might make it a little bit lighter. I'll make a section that's a little bit lighter, leave that darker color. There we go. Okay, I'm just kind of stalling for time here, trying to let that dry. I might go ahead and let you do that really quick, honey. I just am afraid it's going to lift off the color. If if it's if it's starting to dry, acrylics when they start to dry. Um, okay, this is like if you haven't been in any of my shows, you're like, what the heck is that? Um, <laughs> when acrylics start to dry, they get sticky. So if you mess with them while they're drying, they will um, lift on you. So I will. I I think I'm just going to have them dry it, so we don't have any issues. Okay, let's put a mountain range behind Stickman here. Stickman is our unofficial mascot, and he comes out every show. And we add something to him that relates to whatever we're painting that night. So we did the reindeer last week. That's why he's got reindeer horns on him. And I'm trying to get this behind him without covering him up. Uh, we we did have a previous Stickman, so this is Stickman number two because the Stickman one got. All right, there we go. He got retired because he was full up with <laughs> I don't know, does that look like a 2.0, yep, this is 2.0. Mark actually did a tutorial on how to do that, so it's on my uh, Thankful Art group on Facebook if you want to know how to draw a stick man. It is very informative and thorough. It was very entertaining. I had a hard time not laughing. Yeah, I'm still haven't got over that. You know, I, I don't sit here and laugh at you while you're teaching yours. So, <laughs> That's true. you know, come on, <laughs> give an artist a break here. <laughs> I love you. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna uh, figure out my third here. So this is my 
third on either side. This side, I didn't go down this far, I don't think. And kind of have my imaginary line going through here. I want to come down and get some of this purple in, so I'm just going to draw kind of a squiggly line all the way across. And this mountain range had pretty, there was one mountain that kind of came down like this, and then there's another, so I'll pull out the picture. There's another over here that kind of came a little bit higher and wandered down. So we'll do these two. Actually, let's get this peak in there because that's kind of a cool feature. And I'm just using regular school chalk. Um, so that'll be my one, two, and then we'll do another one in here somewhere. Kind of, I'm not going to go as high as the other one was and bring it around like that. So we'll start with this farthest back and mountains will um, turn a little bit desaturated, more purplish because of the atmosphere, um, the blue in the sky, I guess. I don't know. It turns the mountains the farther away that they are. They look a little bit more purple, blue colored. So we're going to Put them in really light purpley down in the farthest away one. Just want it enough contrast that you can see it against that sky. I might even go a little bit darker with that. Um, grab some of that little bit darker purple. Because the foreground ones are going to be really almost black. So I want to have a good graduated color and I'm just kind of wiggling um, using the edge of my brush to get that. That's looking good. Now I'm going to add white. So this whole bottom part is going to get white and especially where these are meeting. I'm going to have nice light color right here. And I'm not, don't have a lot of paint on my brush, so I'm just going to very lightly kind of brush over that. It's not super smooth, and I don't think it has to be really. You can leave a little bit of brush strokes. I'm going to get a little bit more white here. I want it nice and bright where that transition is so that when I put my other mountain here, there's some nice light color behind it. It'll really make those forward mountains pop out. Okay. Just barely touching my canvas here to blend it. Okay. There we go. See how light kind of just graduates from dark to light there. Let's do my next mountain range. Grab a little bit more blue. And do a little bit darker on this one. So it should be a little couple of shades darker and I'm just kind of wiggling it so it gets kind of some of these rough. This picture especially had all these kind of very jaggedy um, lines in the mountain, so we'll just kind of do that by wiggling that top edge of my brush a little bit as I paint with it. Pull that color down a little bit. Pick up some white. Do the white underneath. We'll end it up. Do this in sections so that this doesn't dry on you before you get to the next section. So this looks a little bit like the one that we did when we were in college, honey. Uh, yes. Well, the one that you did, and I just made a big mess of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't teaching it then. I could have, I think I could do a better job of teaching you how to you do You were it. just demonstrating that it's not just so easy to paint. <laughs> Because I was telling you that, oh, anybody can do that. 
Was that where you? Yes, and okay. then you proved to me that no, not anybody can do it. Well, not with that a little little training. Well, no, at least. Well, right, but <laughs> you know, it's just when you go into the galleries and you see us, you know, just paint splattered everywhere. You're like, oh, come on, <clears> really? <throat> really? Right. But no, that there is actually some method behind it, and yes, you know, there's a difference between a good looking mess and a bad looking mess, I guess. <laughs> An intentional mess. Right. It's all about the intentionality or intention. Is that the word? Is that a word? Yeah, I'll go with that intentionality. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of the darker blue just along that line there because I felt like it was not giving enough contrast. I feel like the paint is fighting me tonight for some reason. I don't know what's going on. And adding blue, adding white to it just while it's wet there. Blending it out. Okay, there we go. So purple, a little bit more blue here. We'll just keep on going with that bluish color all the way along this mountain range here. You could mix up a little bit more of this at a time so that you don't have to keep mixing it because the mixing can t slow you down a little bit. So, Or you could even use craft paints, really craft paint, you know, the in the little bottles that could uh, speed it up. You could use different colors of craft paint and then you wouldn't have to mix anything at all. Just get colors that are gradually darker, lighter, whatever. Okay, grabbing my white and blending that up. I don't think this is going to be a very long project here tonight. I say that every week. I was going to say, just like all the other not long projects. <laughs> <laughs> He's just grumpy because he hasn't gotten to eat yet. Tonight. No, I, I've had a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten either, so <laughs> I suffer with you. So if you hear some rumbling and grumbling, it's probably it, our stomachs. It could be. Yeah. yeah. This is starting to dry, so I'm going to not mess with that too much. And I'm just going to kind of move along over here. Keeping the lighter part. I'll probably add some more blue up in here because it got kind of light right there. I'm liking these colors, though. I think that I, I kind of like, the, I don't know, I can't do monochromatic. It's just not me. I like color too much. Most of this is going to be covered up by the mountain range and the pine trees that are coming down this way. But you still want it back there so that it's peeking through. I'm going to grab some of that darker blue. And some of that darker blue up there. adding a little bit of water to my paint every now and then. If it starts to get sticky or kind of skip on you, then you need, need to add a little bit of water. Not a lot, but just enough to make it move around on you. Okay. So you're still going with the angled brush that yep. you started with. Yep. This is still the angle brush here. That's what I told the people in chat, but I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it from here, but. Yeah. My half inch angle brush and it's doing a pretty good job with it, I think. Oop, got a little bit extra white there. Add a little bit more white. This area down here. Oh, I just got paint in my hair. I just felt it. <laughs> I, I totally have paint all in my hair right down here. I moved my 
hair out of my way. I felt it stick to my... <laughs> 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 oh my goodness, how did I even do that? I don't even know. I don't know. I don't either. This is a tough profession. This is hazardous. The pitfalls of painting. I know. Okay, I think that's dry enough. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of the... More of that darker blue up there, just along that area there. So you could totally do the lighter blue. Um, another way of doing this, I'll do this next one a little bit differently, so you can see another way of doing this. If you don't, if you're not comfortable with the blending, you know, blend on wet on wet, um, which you know it can be tricky with for beginners to do that, and that's normal. So don't get discouraged if you're having a little bit of a hard time. Um, what you can do, and I'll do it over here, clean out my brush. So this is the lighter purple um, up here. So say I want to add the darker color like I did with this blue. I'll just add a little bit of the darker. Make sure your brush is all the way clean. This one's not wanting to come clean. Here we go. Okay, so I got most of the water out of it. And I'm going to pick up and blend in this lighter color. So it'll be the purple or the white and a tiny, tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of the quinacridone to make that purple color. And hopefully you'll have this. So this is the base color and then I'm just going to add a little bit of a darker color to just the tip of it and turn my brush it's easier to do this if you've turned it turn it so that I am brushing the dark right along the edge and you'll see that the brush the lighter color is going to blend out right here and the darker color will be along that ridge line where you want it to be. It's probably too dark there, so I don't want it to be quite that dark. Okay, let's do that. See, now the only restriction to this is that the dark color is going to be really high. It's the width of your brush, so your lighter color um, you won't have as much of a graduation of color, but it's another way of doing it. Okay, so far so good. I feel like that blue is a little bit bright, so I might add a little bit of... Uh, something to tone it down. Maybe a little bit of that orangey yellow. Maybe burnt sienna. Let's try that. That blue's looking awfully bright to me. Just try a little bit of burnt sienna to it. That'll gray it out a little bit. We're not using a lot of it. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I'm going to use that back here because these colors that are farther back are, are going to be less saturated. Um, it's a little bit dark. I'm going to add a little white to it. All right now, I know I already did this whole thing, but I wasn't happy with the color, so I'm just going to quickly go in and darken change that color a little bit. Adding a little bit of white to it, feel like it was a little bit bright. This is the kind of things that would slow us down. This is what's going to make us go take longer than hours, honey. Sorry. I didn't work out these colors ahead of time. I didn't do an example. That's my problem. My fault. I had time today. I just didn't do it.
I was working on snowman. There's the priorities. I'm gonna blend that out. I'm not even listening. Oh, I am. I just I never bought into your lies about it was gonna be short. See the subtle difference between this one and this? It's just a little bit more, more toned down. I feel like this looks like a weird volcano or something. I'm going to kind of rough it up a little bit. Break it up. There we go. You never bought into my lies about it being a short show? Yeah, it kind of smelled like beef and cheese in here. <laughs> like your elf reference? Yes. Got to have our elf reference during the holidays. Nice. You're a mess. Okay, people wanted to know what colors did you just mix? I just mixed the burnt sienna into my my uh, ultramarine blue okay. and white. That's it. Just a teeny tiny bit of the burnt sienna, and it's just toning down this bright blue. It just felt like it was too bright. Even mixed with the white, it was bugging me. It wouldn't be this bright this far away. This is the farther. Okay, that's better. Just kind of toned down, not quite so in your face blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of white down here. To fade it out. Just along the bottom edge there where that next mountain starts. And I'm just picking up the this color to blend along that transition there. Put down a little bit of white, blend it up into the blue, and then pick up a little bit of the blue and blend it back down into the white. So here's the white up into the blue, and then pick up a little bit of that blue and blend it over the top down into the white a little bit. Wipe your brush off if you got too much paint and then just lightly blend over. All right, good enough. I'm not gonna fuss with it too much. Now we're gonna start getting a little bit darker. So we'll go ahead and do the ultramarine blue. And I kind of liked that gray color. So I'm gonna go ahead and get add the burnt sienna to it. And I'll add some of the quinacridone magenta too to make it kind of purpley slightly. Let's see what happens. What are you laughing at? I'm well, just listening to you, just saying we'll mix it, see what happens. <laughs> Might as well. Hey. Yep. That's how you figure stuff out. You guys are seeing it in real time. So this is stuff I would have normally worked out ahead of time, but I actually liked, we did this, uh, the painting that we did with the landscape last week, I think it was, with the cabin in the woods, um, was done this way. It was kind of just figured out on the fly. So I've got this dark color. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of white make kind of a medium color a little bit one shade darker than this yeah that's good oh i like that color kind of a purpley gray blue so that was burnt sienna ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta the quinacridone and the blue ultramarine makes it the purple and then the burnt sienna just makes it more gray tones it down because it's almost opposite the color wheel from the um, ultramarine blue because the burnt sienna has so much redness in it or orangeness, oranginess and orange and blue are opposite on the color wheel so when you mix them together they kind of create this really pretty gray brown color which is working I like it okay so I'm just going to pull this down this mountain range has a lot of a lot of depth here. There's a big shallow area here. 
So it's going to come all the way down here, and there's going to be this diagonal thing that happens. In fact, I'll go ahead and draw it in so that I don't go too far down. Starts up here and skirts all the way down across to this side. And then there's this mountain side that comes down like this. And then another one that sort of comes in like this. So those are our, they're just kind of crisscrossing, fit them in however you can. They don't have to be exactly this way. We're sort of, you know, make, making this one up as we go because it's, it was kind of high on this picture. I just didn't like how it was almost touching this one. I just wanted it a little bit more separation. So we moved it down. No biggie, right? <laughs> Moving mountains. Exactly. <laughs> My this paint is giving me problems today. I don't know why it's not seeming like it wants to cover very well. You may have to do two coats on this, especially if you use craft paint. I guess because these are kind of transparent colors, they're not uh, covering as well as I might like. I'm, even though I'm adding white to make them more, more opaque, they're still being a little bit see-through-ish. Okay, so now I'm going to start adding my white down here. I'm just going to start filling in this bottom, and I still have that color on my brush, so it's going to mix and make that kind of smoky gray-blue color. like this was down farther this way. I think I brought that down. Too, too far there. And just lightly brushing back and forth, making sure if this starts to feel sticky, just stop and let it dry and we can do this after it dries. So you don't want it to lift off your color underneath there. Looking pretty good. I don't know, I've been wanting to do one of these. It's not really a Christmassy project necessarily. It's got pine trees though, so that was my justification. You know, you could always do snow on your pine trees and pretend like this was a snowy winter scene. kind of wanted to get away from just kind of do a uh, normal project every now and then even though you know it's Christmas time I've already done several Christmas ones so we'll kind of break it up a little bit do a little bit of a little bit of normal something and then Saturday we're doing a snowy church it's really pretty it's a Yosemite chapel so if you want to look up pictures of Yosemite chapel actually the the um, scheduled event is already on my channel, so if you go there, you can see the picture of what it'll look like. It's really pretty, and uh, so I don't know how long that'll take, but it, it shouldn't be too complicated. It'll be a little bit more of a, uh, a little bit more advanced than this one for sure. So I kind of saved the longer ones for Saturday shows. All right, so it's starting to get sticky. I don't want to mess with it too much, but you can kind of see how it looks sort of like fog just by putting that lighter color in that V area there. Not my brush. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Good. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Get a little Joey in there. Well, want to catch some dinner after the show? Yeah, I think All right. so. Okay. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Stay focused. I am. I'm just, yeah. 
Okay, so I want to do, let me see, I want to do really dark here. I want to do almost the same darkness here. So here I think I'm going to do probably be a little bit brighter blue version of that. So we'll get a little bit more straight connect, straight ultramarine. I'm still not putting out enough here. This, oh, you can see, I've already had to use my my pliers on this one. My ultramarine blue cap is not cooperating with me. It doesn't want to work. We need to change it out. Golden has the worst caps. They could just fix their caps. Get these kind of caps and you'd be the perfect paint. It's like... I actually use my Liquitex when I when I finish with my Liquitex I save the caps and put them on my golden paint bottles. <laughs> Sorry golden but your caps are really bad. <laughs> Fix them. Okay. I think I'm going to add this to it. I think it'll make kind of a softer. Oh yeah, that's a pretty color. Um the yellowish tone to it'll make this a little bit on the green side. And, yeah, that'll be good. We'll just start up here and kind of work our way down. I'm just going to use a little bit thicker paint. I think I was just going a little bit too thin on my paint. And this one here, again, it just has some very subtle little... I don't know, tree stuff going on there. So I might even just use the tip of my brush and just kind of tap along here so that it looks like keep them kind of vertical and just sort of tap with this angle brush and make some little fuzzies along that ridge line. All that got covered up. Did you say put fuzzies? Fuzzies, yeah. Little okay. fuzzies. All right. Mm -hmm. That's a word. Oh, I believe it. I'm just wondering <laughs> what year of art school did you learn that <laughs> term? It's a very scientific. You don't know anything about art. Don't I, talk I, to me that, about that's it. That's true. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. I got this covered. <laughs> it's just smart aleck. I just want to make sure you're not making up terms over there. No. Okay. <laughs> I did have I did have a comment from a guy saying that my beginner tutorial was amateurish, which made me think, well, of course it's amateur. It's for an amateur. So why would it not look amateurish? Oh, my gosh. Some people are so ignorant. <laughs> of course, my group, like, totally jumped all over that. They were... They were all defending me. Oh, they're so sweet. They're my Facebook group. I posted the guy's comment, and yeah. well, they were they went nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't take those things to heart, you know. I mean, I know enough about you know. If you want to judge my art, go look at my you know fine art page on and tell me you know about my art. But don't judge my art from a beginner tutorial for goodness sake I mean of course it's going to be simple that's the whole point <laughs> to make and, it easy and the, and the effort that they put in to stop and watch and then take the time and make the comment was yeah was, was just stunning, I mean what's so. your what's your motivation yeah. for making a comment like that yeah. anyways I don't know but you won't find that on the Facebook group of yours nope there's a whole group of people who are so encouraging and and uh, help each other and uh, support each other because we know that everybody on there is learning and yeah and going and there is no bad art so exactly you know everybody starts somewhere you know you don't ride a bike perfectly the first time mm -hmm. you're gonna fall off and get bruises and you're gonna learn and eventually you get there yep yep i mean i really think that comments like that kind of are i get i get angry for people because i know he's probably said the same thing to other people who are trying to learn art and that makes me upset because that's what keeps people from trying 
to paint in the first place is is the fear of being criticized in that way, you know, mm -hmm. when they're just starting out and just learning, you know, you can't expect somebody to paint like they've been painting. You know, you can't, oh, I heard a quote one time, it was like something like, you can't judge my middle from your beginning or something like that, you know. So when you're looking at art, you know, don't compare yourself to somebody that's been painting for, you know, 20 plus years. And really don't compare yourself to anybody. Just kind of enjoy the journey if you can. Uh, we're so critical on ourselves and don't give ourselves a chance to actually uh, fail. And, you know, that's part of learning. It's part of the journey is kind of figuring out. It's not, you know, and it's not like my painting that he was criticizing is my best work. And anyways, there's things that I would have changed for sure. But it's just the fact that somebody feels the need to criticize somebody else's artwork. It just stifles creative expression when people are worried about what other people are going to say about it, you know. Just have fun with it. Don't worry about the art police. They're out there. They, they're they self-appointed. That's the point. They don't have a credential, you know. <laughs> you don't have to listen to them. <laughs> They think it's their job to tell you how your art should happen, and that's not the truth. Okay, so I'm kind of leaving streaks. If you notice, I'm doing this one a little bit differently than I did this one. These, these ones I kind of blended this way to make it look sort of like mist was rolling in. This one I'm doing a little bit more detail, just kind of running my brush vertically here with my uh, blending. And that way it kind of looks like maybe there's some trees there. Just gives it a little bit of that sort of uh, effect. So I'm liking these colors, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I think I like them. So let's do this one, like a really dark purpley with um, a tiny bit of green. So I'll make a green out of my ultramarine and yellow. Green and purple make a really good um, landscape color. It's weird. I don't know why, but it does. So the quinacridone will make a purple with the blue. These are really good. This is a good mixing lesson. I need to put that in my title. We're mixing some interesting things here today. So, and it's just this kind of a gray purple. I don't know if you can even see it. It's similar to this color, just a little bit darker. Let's see if I like it. Yeah, I think I do. I might just do the whole painting with this brush. It's kind of working pretty well for me. Let me push it flat so I get more of a chiseled edge on it. It may be getting too saturated with paint to give me a good point right now. I might have to clean it out, but no, I think it's working okay. So I'm just doing these vertical taps to get, do I need to zoom in? I feel like I can zoom in a little bit maybe. There we go. This tree line here has got these trees that are I feel like it could use a little bit more green too. I don't know, we'll see. I might add a little bit more green in the foreground when I get these on. Just kind of letting my brush sort of fuzz out at the tip so that it's making these kind of little tree shapes. Just the main thing is just to kind of keep them vertical. Your your tendency is going to be to do this and have them kind of follow the, the ridge line this way because you're tilting. But just always kind of keep this edge of your canvas in mind in line and keep it vertical so that these trees don't look like they're leaning over too much. I mean, some trees will be leaning, but not that. You're seeing these pretty far away, so you're not going to see the lean 
very drastically if there is any. Okay, this is pretty. This is kind of like that ombre, misty ombre one that I did. This is sort of the same technique that I used for that one, the one that I did a while back. Misty mountain ombre trees or something like that. I'll keep these pretty small. These are really tiny little trees here, so I wanted to keep these. I'm kind of just working up and down so that these there's like a variation of some little gaps in between these. Okay. All right, I'm just going to pull this down. There's going to be a little bit more detail in this hillside in front of us here, so I'm going to pull this purple down. And add a little bit of the unbleached titanium. To it. And I'm just going to kind of add some light and dark areas. It'll just kind of fool the eye and make you think that there might be something going on in there. It doesn't have to be really detailed in order for your eye to kind of fill in the gap. So just a little few little light areas, some contrast, and your eye will go, oh, that's rocks or that's bushes or whatever kind of fills in the details for you. This is sort of impressionist style, I would say. Keep these kind of small. Using the tip of my brush to sort of just blend them out so that they're not too noticeable. And I'm kind of just trying to replicate these kind of little pockets of light color and I'll probably put a nice little ridge of dark trees right here, but I'll get some of this lighter color underneath first. So, just dabbing on some color here. Go ahead and blend that out. We're doing good, I think. 15 minutes to finish. I think we'll get it done in close to an hour. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that, and what I'm going to do is mix up my green for this side, and then I'll use a little bit of it over here when I finish. So, oops. Question about uh, where did the reference oh, photo shoot, come from? Sorry. The reference photo, uh, this one came from Pixabay. Um, this one did. And then my colors here, I just, am, I look before the show at some pictures of the Smoky Mountains to kind of get the colors right. But I'm not using the reference photo for anything but the colors. So I feel like this one might be a little bit bright. Might add a little bit of this purple in. down that color just slightly. I don't want it to look like it's got little lines in it though. Okay. Let's not mess with it too much. Okay, we had a question from a uh, person in the chat asking or stating that it seems like that they use a lot more paint. They then, do? Yeah, and uh, they're just wondering what could be some of the causes behind, you know, having 
seemingly having to use more paint? I think it's a personality thing. I would ask them if they're kind of an outgoing kind of person because I te- I, I've i found, in, and this is just my own personal theory, it's not scientific or anything, but I have found when I'm teaching that those folks that are really outgoing and energetic and sort of um, exuberant tend to paint with a lot of paint. And those who are a little bit more shy or, you know, introverted will tend to hold back and paint with less paint. It's just a personality thing. That's that's my okay, cause observation, they, but I don't know. In their comment, they stated that uh, it doesn't spread or cover as much as they expect it to. So uh, it could be your climate. Then okay. it could be that if you're if you're in a, a really dry climate, that it could be that. Yeah, okay. you might just need to add a little bit of glazing medium or something to your paints uh, to get them to move a little bit more. And if you're using cheaper paints, too, then they won't cover as well. So it depends on, you know, I don't know. I would ask if they're using... I the think they said that they were using Liquitex. Basics? Um, or heavy body? I don't think they specified. Okay. So the actually, <laughs> somebody just asked them the same question in chat if you're yeah. using the basics or heavy bodies. So we'll find out. Okay. All right. So let's do this dark, this really, really dark here. We'll do this. I may need a little bit more of my yellow, I think. I'm going to find a spot over here where I can mix it together. Whoa, that's a lot of yellow. Too much. Oh, well. Maybe not. I don't know. So ultramarine blue and yellow oxide makes this really beautiful kind of olive green. This is transparent yellow oxide, so it's a little bit, it's less opaque, obviously, since it's transparent. Um, and... I'm mixing up quite a bit because I need a lot of this green. And I need it to be a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is just add a little tiny bit. This is where the black is going to come in. I don't like to use black a lot to mix darker, but sometimes you just have to. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. I could have used like a, a dark hooker's green or dark sap green, you know, sap green plus, plus stop it. Um, <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm being childish. <laughs> but you knew exactly what I was laughing at. I knew at. what you were laughing at. Okay, I'm going to use this. Yeah, that's a good color. Okay, I'm going to use this along here. And, I mean, just using these same colors um, throughout the whole painting really helps your, uh, your painting have some... Um, what is the word? Cohesion or unity. There we go. This is a really stiff or steep mountainside, so we're gonna. This is definitely very opaque. I probably should have used my or very transparent. I should have used my opaque yellow oxide for this because the ultramarine blue and that are so and transparent. I was going to say that, but I didn't want it to, you know, disrupt <laughs> what you're doing there, so I just let you go with it. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't just do that you for you. You should have told me. Yeah. yeah. You should have warned me. I was I was too focused on the hooker's green. Jeez. Which comes from when they were harvesting ice. You know, the, the people who were doing that with the hooks, they were wearing green so they could see them on the ice in case something happened. Is that true? Uh, that, that may not be true, but... <laughs> that may or may not be true. It may or may not be true, but... It, it sounds right. It sounds plausible. <laughs> Somebody suggested that it was from golf, that a hook in golf is, a, you know, was a golf stroke, so... Huh. Um, that hooker screen, you know, might be, might have had something to do with golf. I don't know. So, could be. We don't know. I think it has to do with the person who actually probably made the paint color in the first place. It's probably his last name was Hooker, which I feel sorry for him. That's all I have to say. He probably got teased a lot as a child. Okay, I feel like I want a little bit more blue with this green. I feel like it's kind of bringing it down here. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. There we go. 
It's a little bit prettier. It's kind of almost the actual picture had um, had all kinds of I don't I don't remember where it was taken from, but it had all kinds of like apparatus along the edge here. There were all these little things here, and then down here there was some sort of a thing. It made me wonder if it was like a mining area or what. It kind of they were doing something out there, maybe logging. Who knows? Okay, I wasn't paying attention at the beginning of the story. What? <laughs> she said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I said that this the original painting or picture, I cropped it, but there was like this platform of wood kind of stuff, and then there yeah. was all these little things along the mountainside there. I don't really know what those are for. So it depends on where it was taken. If Run it was you know, in the eastern part of the U.S., is probably mining. Mining, that's kind of what yeah. I thought, maybe, mining. Or could, could be logging, but, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let's use a little bit of this green color. I'm going to zoom out now. I feel like it's too close. Okay, so somebody Googled it for us to set our story straight. Okay. It was uh, the name from a botanical artist, William Hooker. Nice. Who was alive from 1779 to 1832? Wow! And he first created the pigment for leaves. Nice. So, if you want to right. believe Google over me, that's fine. <laughs> Mark sticks by his story. That exactly. The exactly. Ice truckers? No. Yeah, because I think anybody can post anything on the internet. You could go on Wikipedia and add that. I could. Anybody can edit Wikipedia. It might not stay up for very long that way, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel like this white needs to be toned down. I feel like it doesn't match anything else. So before I put my trees in there, I'm going to do that really quick. I'm already at an hour. Sorry, honey. Mm -hmm. He knew. He knew. Okay, so it was... Ultramarine and burnt sienna for that section. And a little bit of white. Okay, so I'm just going to gray this. Oh, that's pretty dark, but add a little bit of water. You do yours, just don't make it quite as white down there. Keep it a little bit gray. That's better. I feel like it just got a little bit too. Oh no. Okay, I'm just kind of working fast so that this doesn't dry on me. And I really need to okay, be careful down here because it's starting to dry already. Okay, there we go. I think that's a little bit better. Not quite as weird looking. I'm going to go ahead and do the same with this one. And this one is... Got similar colors. It was the blue and white. And I'm just going to... Go over it a little bit with... I'm just going to dry brush it this time. Seems like it's dry brushing okay. I don't want to change the value too much. I like the value. I just think that the white was a little too harsh. So I might have, instead of using the white on these, used that um, unbleached titanium instead. I think it'll give us a little bit better, softer blend. I still want that misty look, but I just don't want it to be so white. It's just not looking right to me. Okay. 
add a little bit of water just to get it to take that off. And you notice I've kind of covered over my purple there, so I'll have to go back over that. Okay. I'm just going to blot it a little bit. better. I just feel like it was a little bit in your face. Okay, so I'm going to grab that green and I think I am going to grab my yellow oxide that's opaque because I feel like it will make my life a little easier over here. I still need more blue. I'm using a lot of blue for this one. Let's put in a few trees. I'll go ahead and grab my fan brush. And I'll mix up some more of that green. So I'll grab my ultramarine blue, my opaque yellow oxide this time. just a tiny bit of black so that I'm not going to mix it through the whole thing though I'm just going to mix like a little bit of black over here so they have some of this lighter color to use as well okay we'll use this darker shade with the fan brush and I'm going to put in of a center stem just kind of tap lightly and then we're gonna tap side to side I think that that's gonna work okay maybe use my little tiny spotter wet it down just a little bit and add in that center and dot a few little random branches. The fan brush might be a little bit too difficult to control on this, I don't know. If you're not comfortable with it, you might just do this with your small brush or leave this part out completely. You could do what I did here and just do some uh, up and down. So let me try one with my little spotter here. The short bristled uh, round brush. And just do kind of some little horizontal dabs back and forth this along this center line. That's good. Okay, somebody asked um, was there a reasoning <clears throat> to use the ultramarine blue instead of thalo blue with the green? Um, just because I was using it back here and I wanted a purple, thalo blue doesn't make a very good purple because it's so green. So, um, I just use the ultramarine blue because of that. But thalo blue would work, yeah, thalo blue would make a brighter green. Okay. So if you don't want it to be olive colored, you can use thalo for that. Okay. So, yeah. All right, I'm going to tap in. I'm going to kind of use it sort of on its edge here. Not completely, s I'll hold it this way, but I'm not setting it down this way because it'll make a huge tree that way. So I'm just gonna touch the tip of it side to side and kind of make this cone shape thing happen here for these pine trees. And these are vertical as well. So make sure we're keeping them vertical. Even though they're kind of clinging on the side of this mountain, they're still growing straight up toward the sun. Keep a 
little bit extra paint brush here. So I'm just kind of leaving plenty of gaps in there. Might zoom in a little bit on these. Don't get them too solid. You want lots of open space. So I'm using this liner brush to do the centers. I'm going to spray my palette here. It's starting to get dry. Oops, don't do that. Jeez. I keep spraying this and lifting up the color. Okay, um, right here. So we have three that are right in here, that are little, little ones, pretty close to each other. And then another really big one right here. Make sure this center line is vertical. Okay. Okay, which brand of fan brush are you using? This is now? a low Cornell, and I have not been able to find it because people have been asking me. I've had this for years, so I probably got it back in the 90s from somewhere. I don't think that they're making this exact same one anymore, but it's just a stiff bristled, very small. It's a, I don't even know what number it is. I think that they, they come in ones and twos, so it's probably either one or two, number one or two, so you're looking for it. I have a link down in the description to one that mm -hmm. was kind of the closest one I could find on Amazon. Yeah, there's a link to a Windsor and Newton yeah. hog fan number three bristle brush. Yeah. So down be below the video, there's all the uh, materials used and links to several if you want to go there to purchase. They may, they may be a little bit different from what I'm using, but I tried to find ones that were similar, you know. Um, okay, I'm going to use my brush now to just kind of tap in some little, and this is really the hardest part. So if you're a total, total beginner, I didn't really think about this when I was saying it was a beginner project. <laughs> this part is going to be a little bit trickier. So you might want to leave this part out and just do these kind of more random. Um, I mean, I think it's totally doable as long as you kind of do this A shape and leave a little bit of, you know, leave a little bit of the background showing between them. You might just want to use a brush like this instead of the fan brush. I'm finding the fan brush is a little bit difficult. And I'm going to put some random kind of bushes and things along that edge to sort of break it up too. Okay, that's looking better. Try to keep them about the same distance apart here and maybe don't do them exactly straight across like some up and some down. And this little A-shaped thing going on. And don't go ahead and do all the way down because they're... A little darker dabs in there just to reinforce that shape. And I'm going to go ahead and put some in here. Let me grab a little bit of black. and do one big one right here. So it can look like it's kind of, oops, I'm kind of off the camera there, sorry. 
it's going to be very dark, so you might not even, you know, kind of know what that is, but it'll sort of be hinting that there's some stuff going on down here, though, in front, pushing that hillside back even a little bit. Might do a few. If you look at my picture here, there's some kind of bushes and trees and things, little darker areas, so I'm just going to emphasize some of those with some little brush. Okay, then we'll use this lighter color and kind of put some of that into. Just going to break up some of those brush strokes that we've got going on. And we might even go a little tiny bit dark, lighter in some areas. I'm going to let that dry and see what it looks like. We'll come over here and do some of it over here. So I'm going to use this color. I'm not going to go quite as dark as over here, but I'm going to put in some... The Oops, thank you. Let me zoom out. I can't get it any farther over there. We're going to put in some foreground trees, and it'll kind of push those... this um, hillside back a little bit, so. So I'm kind of just tapped in a center line and then sort of doing random tree shapes. I'm not being quite as deliberate with the trees here, just sort of. deserve to have some detail. You're yawning over there. Sorry, honey. An hour and 15. We're doing good. We're almost done. I'm so coming to your gentle voice like all the people <laughs> comment all the time in the chat. <laughs> so calming and soothing. Calm, and calm, calm voice. Yes. You're, am I, you, this is your nice way of saying I'm putting you to sleep. <laughs> 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 I see where you're going with that. <laughs> Okay, and grab a little bit more of the yellow oxide. We'll make a lighter green color and we'll just tap in some lighter green down here just to kind of fill that in. And maybe a little bit of the unbleached titanium. This lighter color here, just to kind of tap in a little bit of greenery, even on our purple mountain there. Just a little tiny bit. I don't want to overwhelm it, but I'm just wanting to add a little bit of this color back in here, popped in here and there. Fill in some of these little gaps where maybe the white color from the canvas is still showing through. Okay, then I'm going to clean this out, and I just need to touch up a little bit of my tree line on this one here. So let me grab my angle brush again and zoom out all the way. today and just going through the whole tube. I think I've added it five times now. <laughs> if 
you're low on ultramarine, you may want to pick a different blue. <laughs> Whoops, wrong color. All right, so I want to add ultramarine to the unbleached titanium. If that was this color. I'm going to add just a tiny, tiny bit of red just to make it a little bit more purpley. or unbleached titanium with quinacridone, magenta, and the ultramarine blue. Okay, so it's, this is actually pretty. So I'm going to just use my finger to blend that out. So this is actually pretty close to that color, so I might not want it that quite that purple or quite that dark. So do this before you do your trees. Just realized I needed to clean that up. When I was zoomed in, I realized that the edge was looking a little bit raw. So I'm just pulling it down and letting it kind of dry brush down. A little bit of color. These are just the last little details. And actually, I kind of like it because it adds another layer of color there. Makes it look like maybe you could even do some little trees there if you wanted to. Adding a little bit of the lighter color to blend it back up. to just do the purple too. I think I do. If you do this right the first time, then you won't have to do this. <laughs> I'm only having to do this because I changed my colors. So, if you, use the, if you don't use the white and you use that unbleached titanium to mix in and blend in, you probably won't have to do this step. I'm just cleaning up what I was doing earlier when I added the other color. Okay, that's better. I think let's... Grab some of the quinacridone magenta. Make that purple color. Brighten that up in a couple places. I need to add that green to it so it's not so in your face purple. your finger to blend too. I do that a lot. So if you've got, you know, some color like this and you just want to soften that back bottom edge, you can just rub it with your finger a little bit and it'll blend for you too. Or a paper towel even. So, you know, got these kind of weird finger shapes. Wet my finger a little bit and just blend that out. And I wouldn't do it on a dry canvas. But since I've got paint underneath there, it's just kind of blending it into what was already there. Okay. I think it's good. I kind of still feel like that this could be a little bit different color, maybe a little bit more purpley. Let me try doing that really quick. 
add quinacridone to this color. Grab a little bit of blue. Sorry, hun. I'm almost done, I promise. You don't have to polish just <laughs> me. Just adjusting these colors a little bit. Sometimes this happens when you're painting. You get an idea of what's going to work and then once you get finished you think, oh, that needs to be changed up there. So I'm just going to do that really quick. Yeah, that's better. I just kind of like that purpley color a little bit more than that straight blue. So what you might do is mix up um, your um, this color purple and then just lighten it. To uh, use for these two back mountains here. Alright, so I kind of messed up my fog area, so I'm going to grab my unbleached titanium, lighten it up. actually like the fact that we did several layers here it sort of makes it a little bit more interesting to me doing it this way so even though you know I say that you know it might not be the easiest way to do it it's I think it actually adds a little bit extra interest to it having these extra layers now I would probably need to go through here and clean up this mountainside here, what I'm going to do is use my cloth and just wipe off any paint that got over the top there and just dab it to blend it out. Okay. Yeah, that's better. All right. I'm liking that better. I think I can call it done. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching today. Hope you've enjoyed this um, really simple landscape, kind of fun, a little bit different. And um, we will see you on Saturday. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this. If you know anybody that likes to paint, I've got all kinds of different uh, tutorials in my channel. So if you click on my name there, it'll take you to my channel homepage and you can see all the different playlists I have. You can click on videos and you can just scroll down through and see all the different videos. I have over 100 videos now um, and all kinds of different playlists for different levels of painting experience. Children all the way up to more advanced students. So thanks so much guys. Really appreciate you watching tonight and we will see you Saturday at 2 p.m. Central for our Church in the Snow. Thanks so much.